130 days with what could be the last Samsung Galaxy Note flagship, the phone that truly did justice to the Ultra name in a way Samsung failed to do with the S20 Ultra. Here is my 130 days report sponsored by Rhino Shield. So the Note 20 Ultra, if I have to sum this up very quickly, I think this is as good as a smartphone can be, especially from design perspective. And that's coming from someone who used all flagships from different brands, OnePlus, Oppo, even the latest iPhone. 12 Pro Max. Still, the Note tops them all with their squarish design and the brightest OLED 120Hz in the game. The only flagship smartphone to give adaptive refresh rate, which gives almost the same battery performance as the 60Hz iPhone 12 Pro Max. Punch hole in the middle, just brilliant engineering. As a modern smartphone design and all of its feature wise, I think this is truly the pinnacle of a smartphone. Now, I've been using both glossy as well as the matte finish version of the Note 20 Ultra, and if I have to choose one I will definitely go with the matte finish option this is the best looking flagship from Samsung I wish they had more color options but at the moment you only get this in the bronze color now both of my Note 20 Ultra models are as new as the day I unboxed them all thanks to the ultimate protection by Rhino Shield and big thanks to them for making this video possible Rhino Shield is a popular brand known for making amazing cases for Samsung everything Apple OnePlus and other brands. Rhino Shield cases are highly customizable, non-bulky with lots of variety and cool prints to match your style. I absolutely love their solid suit full cover cases that are lightweight and they give military grade protection from drops with a lot of variety to choose from. For example, the leather finish, carbon fiber, PewDiePie design collection, which I really, really like, along with one of my favorite NASA collection cases. They look absolutely fresh. They also have Mart NX cases that are probably the most customizable cases I've ever seen. These cases have interchangeable back plates, button, rims, and the frame itself, so you can have a full control over the type of look you want for your smartphone. To take the durability to the next level, they have their 3D impact screen protector that can resist three times the impact energy compared to unprotected screens. So what are you waiting for? Use my special link in the description with code ZTechCare for 20% off for the next 48 hours. Yes guys, this awesome deal is just for you, so check it out and get the Rhino Shield protection that your smartphone needs. Now let's talk about performance. I've been using both Exynos and Qualcomm models and let's be honest if you're spending $1300 you better buy the Snapdragon model because this is the one if you're serious about long-term usage of this phone for two to three years if you want to play the most latest and the most high graphical games on your phone at the most highest level and of course if you want the best battery performance on note phone then you better go with the Snapdragon model bottom line you don't deserve Exynos 990 at $1300 I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, the software experience has been pretty good. Like, there's nothing to complain about. Samsung even upped their game when it comes to the software release. The One UI 3.0, based on Android 11, is rolling out for the Galaxy Note 20 devices. It's gonna bring a lot of new changes, uh, faster speed animations, better utilization of that adaptive refresh rate. I'm still waiting for the update to arrive on my Note 20 Ultra because, of course, it depends on the market as well, but it's gonna come really, really soon. Okay, let's talk about the camera there are certain things that I really really like on the Note 20 Ultra. I think this phone has the best camera zoom that I have tried. Literally amazing quality. Even at 10x level, it brings all those details. It also has the best ultra wide angle lens, especially in night mode. I've compared it a number of times to the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the image always came out with slightly more detail and a better light. When it comes to the daytime photos, I think it has excellent colors, great dynamic range. I mostly stick to the 12 megapixel mode. I don't think I've ever used the 108 megapixel mode separately. I wish they provided the option to use that high resolution count in the Pro mode. That's where it should have been utilized. Now, if you don't like Samsung's processing, you can use the Pro mode to shoot in RAW, and that allows you to capture a ton of detail because this is such a big sensor, and then you can edit these photos in Lightroom to the way you like. Now, video performance is great, but it cannot shoot 60 FPS video on all lenses, so it's just limited to the main camera lens. I still don't prefer Samsung skin tones. I tried different settings, but 
it keeps making things a bit unrealistic to my taste. No night mode option in portrait mode. Also, when you're taking quick video within the camera application, which is something that you should do if you want the best quality Instagram stories, for some reason, it pauses the background music, which is something that iPhone doesn't do. This is something that I hope they fix via software. So overall, this is such a good phone. And while that is great, that's also the reason why this could be the last Note flagship ever. The thing is, smartphone sales are kind of declining. There's only so much can you do beyond this point when it comes to a standard smartphone design. Of course, all those standard smartphone upgrades are always nice, like a better camera, better internals. But Samsung is already doing that with its Galaxy S series. And now they're actually trying to introduce new generation of foldable products. Not one, not two, but three models are expected for 2021. Especially with Z Fold 3 getting the S Pen, it makes sense for Samsung to make a smart decision. They could have made the S Pen exclusive to the Z Fold 3, but they still are very generous. They have freed the S Pen and now it's gonna come to the Galaxy S21 Ultra separately, but still it's going to serve that fundamental function. So if you're a Note fan, you'll still be able to utilize the pen on a smartphone. The S21 Ultra takes everything from the Note 20 Ultra and bundles it with crazy camera upgrade and more powerful hardware. With this separate S Pen move, Samsung has made it clear that Galaxy Note phones are coming to an end. Maybe in the future, we might get a completely new scrollable Note flagship phone that transforms into a tablet, but that's in the future. That tech is still far away. Right now, we have the Galaxy Z Fold 3 taking that position. So Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, if it really is the last Note flagship, then yes, it does justice to this legendary lineup. It has truly been the ultimate farewell flagship. I can't wait to see what Samsung will bring to the table with the Z Fold 3, and I'm also super excited for the S21 Ultra. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily tech videos, and don't forget to check out the link in the description. Get the awesome deal on Rhino Shield cases with code ZTechGear for 20% off for the next 48 hours. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.